In this video, we're going to look at programming patterns. Please make sure you've watched and understood the previous videos in this series, as all the parameters we've discussed are programmable within your patterns. And so if you don't know what those are, you won't know what I'm talking about. To start, I've loaded up some sounds created by Lisa Vasquez that are included on the internal flash drive of your S2400, so you can use the exact same ones. And I'm going to make a pattern with them. Gotta wait until you get there, yeah. By default, the S2400 is in pattern mode, which is the base mode of the machine. This is where the patterns are made. You can use the encoder, arrow keys, or keypad to navigate through them. You can store up to 100 patterns in your project, and these are numbered from 0 to 99. Each pattern can be up to 99 measures or bars long, so you've got more than enough to work with. I'm going to start on pattern 0. Firstly, I need to set up the tempo, so I'm going to hit the metronome button to bring up the metronome settings menu. From here, I can set the metronome scaling, the count in when recording, which defaults to a one bar count in, the metronome level, the metronome output channel, and whether it's heard during playing, recording, and or sampling. I'm going to activate it for playing using the encoder so that I can hear it whilst getting my tempo right, and I'll switch it back off later. If I hit run slash stop in the transport section, I should now hear my metronome on playback. And I do. I'm going to slow things down, so I'll hit tempo in the transport section to navigate to the tempo setting. I can use the encoder or arrow keys to set the tempo, or manually type it in on the keypad and confirm with enter. I'm going with 85 beats per minute. If you want to access tenths of a BPM, hold down shift and use the encoder or arrow keys. You can also tap the tempo in manually using the tap slash repeat button in the transport section. Next, I'll navigate over to swing to bring up the swing menu. From here, I will set the default notes to sixteenths. That's the note values that are going to swing and change the default amount to 56% so that our sixteenths will have just a little bit of shuffle to them. From this same menu, you can set up the swing amount and notes for every single track discreetly if you wish, or you can set the tracks to default and use the default settings at the top of the menu to define those values. We'll look at copy later as we haven't got anything to copy yet, and we'll move on to the time signature button. From here, you can change the time signature of your pattern. In terms of the note value that defines one beat, this can be quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, or thirty-second notes or crotchets, quavers, semiquavers, or demi-semiquavers in old money. The number of beats in a bar can be anything from 1 to 99, so if you want to compose something in 9932, you can. And because you're now wondering, that sounds like this. OK, I'm going to go back to our good old friend 4-4. Next, we can hit the pattern length button to set the pattern length. I'm going to go for 8 measures or bars. Once selected, depress the encoder or use the enter button and confirm the pattern length change using the enter button. As with copy, we'll look at arrays when we've got something to arrays, so we'll mosey on over to the quantize button to bring up the quantize menu. From here, you can define the quantization for every single track, A1 through D8, individually, but as with the swing menu, if they're set to default, those tracks will follow the default quantize setting at the top of the menu. Quantization goes all the way from a quarter note to a 256th note, or all the way from a crotchet to a demi semi hemi demi semi quaver. That's one to pull out at parties, and it also includes triplet values marked with a T. I'm going to go with our old Rumi 1 16th for this example, but remember I've already defined a bit of 16th note swing in the swing menu. So we've set up the metronome, tempo, swing, time signature, pattern length, and quantize settings, so let's get recording. The first method of recording a pattern is to play it in on the pads. By the way, the pads can be velocity sensitive if you wish. To activate this, hit shift and settings and then unfold the global settings tab. If you activate dynamic pads, then your pads will be velocity sensitive. Although I'm going to switch that back off as I prefer using level parameters for volume programming. To record, hit record slash edit and run slash stop. We get a one bar count in and...
Great, we've got a kick and snare on tracks A1 and A2, both sharing output channel 1. If I didn't like, say, the kick drum performance and wanted to erase it from its track, I'd hit Erase and the relevant pad and then confirm with the Enter button. I do like this pattern, however, so I'll keep it. Quick thing to note, you can deactivate or reactivate recording without stopping the playback if you want to punch things in and out, which is pretty handy. Next, I've got this one-shot hi-hat sample, and I'm going to activate level and multi-mode. I'll set up eight different level values, as was shown in the previous video, and then record with them. If I didn't like what I've recorded, I could again use Erase plus the main pad for this track, being pad 3 in this case, to wipe what I've recorded, and that still works with patterns recorded in multi-mode. You don't have to erase every single multi. Next, I've got this clap sample, and I'll navigate to pitch and multi-mode and set up some different pitches, and I'll record those in. Next, I've got a percussion loop. Now, I'll solo it using the solo button for track 5, and I'll hit play so that you can hear the metronome, and I'll check its tempo. As luck would have it, it's pretty close, but if it wasn't, I could use the pitch parameter with the fader value set to fine to slow it down or speed it up until it matched the tempo. I'll record it into the pattern by triggering it at the start of every other bar, but before I do that, I'm going to bring down its level a little bit, as this is a background part and the level will be recorded into the pattern. Okay, we no longer need the metronome during playback, so I'll go to the metronome menu again and switch that off. Next, the bass sample. I'm going to go to pitch and multi mode and set up some appropriate pitches for the bass line I want. I'm going to use multi mode sync on the filters and set up some bandpass fun on those last three notes, and some multi mode sync envelope mod of those filters, as was shown in the previous video, and this will all be recorded into the pattern. Next, I'll use multi-mode loop slash slice to chop up these chords and Lisa's vocal and record those into the pattern.
I want to copy this pattern over into another slot to make a variation, I'd hit copy and then choose the from pattern, which is the pattern you want to copy, and the to pattern, which is the destination. And then after defining the number of copies, navigate to the copy button and confirm. Pattern zero is now also on pattern one. I'm gonna make some changes to it off camera so that it's different to pattern zero, and we'll see that at the end of the video. Okay, all good, but there's more. If I hit step program in the top right, you can see that we're greeted with a digital readout of what we've sequenced. Use the F1 and F3 keys to change the quantization or zoom settings to match your pattern. I'm gonna use 16th as that's what I recorded with and what everything is quantized to. You can then use the encoder or arrow keys to navigate through the steps. Whenever there is a trigger for a track on a step, the track or tracks in question will be highlighted on the left hand side. If you press enter on a step, you bring up the edit step parameters menu. You can use the encoder or arrow keys to cycle through the tracks that are triggered on a step. In this case, there are three, track A2, track A3 and track A4. You can then depress the encoder or use the enter button to tab through the parameters for each track on a given step. You can then post edit any of these parameters using the encoder or the fader for the relevant track. Once you've made your changes, hit back and you'll be asked whether you wish to save those changes in the pattern using the enter button for yes or the back button for no. If you want to add a trigger on a given step, navigate to it and press the relevant pad. If you want to remove a trigger, navigate to the step, hold a raise and then press the relevant pad. If you want to add a trigger from a multi, you can still do this within the step program by activating multi mode in conjunction with the parameter in question whereupon the pads will represent the multis as per usual. So if you like a performance, but you've stuffed up one rhythm or one pitch or one filter setting or one level, step program is how you fix it or edit it after the fact. You don't need to erase everything and start over. It is also very handy if you've got a longer bit of audio you want to be triggered from the first beat of the first bar, as you can just tap that in quickly rather than trying to time it in manually. You can input an entire pattern from scratch within the step program if pad bashing isn't your thing. There is one more way to sequence on the machine itself and that's TR mode. Whilst step program is active, press F2. The mute and solo buttons now represent 16 steps. Use the pads to select a track and then depress the mute and solo buttons to activate triggers on a given step. Use the F1 and F3 buttons to change the quantization. You can edit the parameters for a track and the live parameter state will be input when you next add a trigger. Alternatively, you can select a track and then press enter on a step to bring up the edit step parameters menu as before. Finally, I should note that you'll probably want to save your project at this point. To do this, hit shift and save and give your project a name, then use F3 to save it. The project folder saved on your SD card will contain your patterns, your samples and your kit file. So you can put that folder on any S2400 if you're collaborating with other people and everything will load up seamlessly. Beautiful. In terms of playing back, I can use the faders in main mixer mode to change the levels of tracks and I can use the B button on a track to override the filter settings that were recorded if I want to do some manual filtering on the fly. Likewise, if I select pitch and then A on a track, I can override the recorded pitch settings of that track if I want to re-pitch as I go. In addition to this, I can use the mute and solo buttons to bring things in and out and I can solo or mute as many tracks as I like and then use shift plus one of the mute or solo buttons to deselect or reselect all of those at once. This works across banks also, although I'm only using one bank in this example, so you don't need 25 fingers or the speed of Bruce Lee when performing. Whilst playing back, I can queue up another pattern using the encoder or arrow keys and it will play after the currently selected pattern has finished. Patterns will loop indefinitely until you manually switch to another or stop the playback. There is, however, an entire song mode which we'll cover in another video. So here's some of that in action.
In the next video, we'll look at song mode.